Okay, folks, now we're going to talk about, in more detail, about the microstructure of compact and spongy bone. All right, so as I mentioned in the last um, video, um, compact bone is um, also referred to as cortical bone because it forms the outer layer of all of our bones. Um, it's the most solid bone, um, meaning it has for any amount of um, volume the greatest density of mineralized collagen. If you look in detail at compact bone, you will um, at a section through it, you will see that it's made up of these very very organized units called osteons. So these are referred to as tubular units um, because as you can see in this image, um, right, if we take a flat section, it just looks like a bunch of concentric circles next to each other. But if we pull out a single osteon, we can see that it's made up of concentric rings of bone, sort of like tree rings. Um, and those are called lamella. Lamella means layer. Think laminate, right? The word laminate, when you laminate a piece of paper, um, you're adding layers to it. So the lamella are primarily calcified matrix, right? That's where the mineral store of the bone is. Um, within each osteon is an area, a hollow area, um, at least non-mineralized area, called the central canal. These are also called Heversarian canals um, in some cases. You might come across that. I always try to use the descriptive name, um, but you definitely, as you're um, looking through figures, if you're looking for extra figures, you might see that. Um, that space in a living animal is filled with blood vessels and nerves, right? Bone is living tissue, and it's very metabolically active, as you'll see, um, and that has to do with its function as a mineral storehouse. But in any case, right, if a tissue has very metabolically active cells, it means you need to get glucose and oxygen in for our friend, aerobic cellular respiration, and you need to move out waste. Okay, so here's a more up close and personal view. So here we have our compact bone, right? We're looking at a long bone, um, which is made of two epiphyses and the diaphysis or shaft. So we've got the periosteum around the very outer layer, right, which is going to have blood vessels in it. Um, we have those circular units referred to as osteons. Um, and we can see the concentric lamella around that central canal, right? So if we're looking from the side, the central canal is here. If we're looking from the top, it would be here. Um, and as I said, the, the central canal contains lymphatic vessels. We'll talk more about um, the lymphatic system. Nerves, blood vessels. Right. It also contains structures that are referred to, or openings, passageways, that are referred to as perforating canals. And this allows for branching of the blood vessels. Um, and as you can see, these perforating canals connect 
different central canals. Now on the inner surface of compact bone, around, around the diaphysis, um, facing the medullary cavity is spongy bone, right? So although sometimes people will say the diaphysis is made of only compact bone, it's primarily compact bone, but there are um, there's sponge, a, a tiny bit of spongy bone on the inner surface. The bridge-like structures in compact bone, or sorry, excuse me, strike that, reverse it, as Willy Wonka would say. Um, the bridge-like structures in spongy bone are referred to as trabeculae. So a little bit about um, bone cells. Mature bone cells are referred to as osteocytes. And remember that for both cartilage and bony tissue, the living cells are in um, chambers. They've sort of walled themselves in um, into these chambers that are referred to as lacunae. Um, and you'll see this when we look at bone through the microscope and also in some of the pictures in this lecture. The, um, in most preparations of compact bone that you're going to look at, the osteocytes are, um, are not present. So all you can see are the lacunae. Now, we have perforating canals, we have the central canal, um, but we still have another um, plane of section that in order to have a three-dimensional um, access to nutrients and waste disposal. And that's performed by these very tiny canals referred to as canaliculi. Say it with me, folks. Canal, lick, you lie. It means in Latin, teeny tiny canals. So these canals are actually really, really important because it turns out that only the osteocytes that are directly near the central canal have access to the blood supply. So an image on the left, this is the central canal. Right, if you rotate that image, you can see the central canal there, right? The canaliculi allow for osteocytes to that are close to so color will show up here. Nope. That's a little better. That are closest. So pretend those are osteocytes and that sort of orangey yellow. Um it allows for them to hand off nutrients and minerals to osteocytes that are located farther out in that particular osteon. So on the right, we have um, uh, a diagram of osteocytes sitting in their lacunae. Um, and you can see here that each osteocyte is sending processes through the canaliculi that allow it to contact another osteocyte. And this does two things. It allows for um, transfer of minerals, or, sorry, nutrients and waste, but also allows for real-time communication between osteocytes and mature bone. And that's part of the way that um, metabolism of bone is regulated. Okay, so here we are again, different view of compact bone. Um, now you've seen that images of compact bone a couple times, that should tell you, yep, I definitely need to know the structure of compact bone um, for, 
for the exam. Um, all right, so these are um, micrographs, pictures taken through a microscope. On the left is a light microscope, which is what LM means. On the right is um, a scanning electron microscope picture. Um, the difference here has to do with um, the level of detail that you can see in the two pictures. Right in the light microscope image, you can see the central canal, right, which is going to be just an open space in general. Um, this one looks like it has a little bit of um, material left in it. And then you can make out the outlines of single osteons. Right, you can see the canaliculi, you can see the lacunae that the osteocytes would be sitting in. You can also see in, let me get rid of this so it's easier to tell what I'm talking about. You can also see in the picture on the left um, what are referred to as interstitial lamellae. So bone is constantly in healthy individuals being built up and broken down. And the interstitial lamellae are the remains of osteons that um, existed previously, but then were broken down um, so that um, the bone could respond to use by increasing its density or shifting um, the areas of the bone that um, are, need to be strongest. Um, it also allows for control of blood calcium, right? And remember, um, inter means between. Um, stitia is space. So an interstitial lamella is a layer in the in-between space, the space in between osteons. The image on the right, um, one of the things that's, that's great about this picture is that you can see the lacunae so clearly, right? It's a little bit, um, you can also make out the osteons very clearly here, but it's a little more difficult um, because of, this is a very thin section. It's a, um, or, or sorry, it's a very superficial view. It's very, we're not gonna be able to see the canaliculi. All right. Onward to spongy bone. So spongy bone um, is also referred to sometimes as trabecular bone or cancellous bone. So trabeculae is, um, a trabeculum is Latin for a timber or think of it sort of as a, um, a truss or a supporting uh, cross beam in a building. Um, Spongy bone is called that because it's porous, um, and the timbers or the um, the trabeculae have irregular shapes, right? So on the the bottom image is actually uh, an image of um, of trabecular or spongy bone. Now, in a living animal, those spaces, um, all of those spaces that you see would be filled with red bone marrows. Spongy bone also contains osteocytes um, and, um, and uh, canaliculi that help connect the most interior osteocytes um, to the area of red bone marrow. Right, so the, um, the organization is much looser and the osteocytes are each, on average, an osteocyte and spongy bone is gonna be closer to the blood supply. So here's another um, image, right? Remember um, the epiphyses of long bones are full of um, spongy bone that has red marrow. So, We've got 
the canaliculi instead of opening um, from one osteon to the next, they're opening um, into the space where the red marrow is. The trabeculae or the um, timbers, I'll go back just a second. Um, cancellus means having crossbars or cross beams. Um, each of these, each of the trabeculae, um, when they're forming, sometimes they're called spicules of bone, are covered with endosteum. And although we don't describe the trabeculae as, um, as having osteons, there is a roughly circular organization, as you can see, um, if you look in, in cross-section, right? Um, there are also additional kinds of, uh, of bone cells that we see much more clearly um, when we look at a slide of, comp of um, spongy bone. Right, so some of those are called osteoclasts, these sort of strange things that look like a puffed up oatmeal raisin cookie with a little frill on the bottom. Um, osteoclasts are uh, the cells that are responsible for breaking down mineralized bone. Osteoblasts, um, which are smaller um, and more numerous, are the cells that are responsible for building up bone. Finally, I just, I wanted to show you the, um, uh, in a living individual, um, I think this image is from um, a hip replacement surgery. Um, so they'll be in putting um, an artificial uh, head on this particular femur. In any case, um, in this image, you can see the periosteum, right? So sort of here, and then covering the surface of the bone. You can see that even in the epiphysis, there is a layer of, let's see, do blue, of um, cortical bone. Um, you can see the spongy bone right here. Um, and obviously you can see the red marrow because it's actually there because this is a living individual having surgery. And then finally, um, you can see the yellow marrow at the center of the bone, right? So. The, in the, with the photograph, we're looking straight down on the top of the head of the femur, like so. All right, so next time we'll talk more about um, the processes that occur in healthy bone.